Emily was a sweet little girl who suddenly disappeared after her parents, Rick and Sarah, went to the park with her. They saw her playing in front of them, and the next second she was gone. She was gone, literally vanished. After 10 years of disappearance, and without warning, she reappeared, right on her parents' doorstep. Emily's mother almost fainted when she saw her. Emily replied, Mom, I have to tell you something. Emily's mother, Sarah, looked at her daughter in disbelief. Is it really you, Emily? She hadn't seen her daughter since she was five. She had changed a lot, but Emily recognized her mother right away. Yes, Mom, it's me. I'm back home. Sarah hugged Emily and started sobbing. She called her husband, and he too couldn't believe his eyes. But how is that possible? But it hadn't been easy for her. She had been through a lot in the past few years and fought to find her parents. And now that she was finally safe, she felt ready to tell them her story. It all started that day 10 years ago, when her parents took Emily to the park. It was early afternoon, and Rick and Sarah had taken their daughter outside. There was a park near their house that they often went to, so they let Emily play and roam free while they sat on a bench watching her. Emily had been playing on the slide and around the monkey bars, and they saw her all the time. But her parents made a small mistake. They went to this park so often that they thought nothing bad could happen. So, for a moment, they took their eyes off their daughter. They lost sight of their daughter as they laughed and talked to their neighbor. It was a brief conversation, no more than two minutes, but that was enough. Rick looked around the park, and Emily was gone. He began to panic as he stood up and circled around the park, calling out his daughter's name. Rick and Sarah spent the next few minutes in complete panic. The neighbors searched the area with them, but Emily was nowhere to be found. Sarah knew she must have been taken away by someone, so they immediately called the police. Meanwhile, Emily found herself in a situation she couldn't get out of for the next 10 years. Emily could hear her parents shouting her name, but she couldn't answer. The person who took her kept her hand over her mouth as he led her into the back of his van. The man walked away and even walked past Emily's parents, but they were too panicked to notice. The kidnapper had been driving for what seemed like an eternity. She looked out the back window to see if she recognized anything, but to no avail. Emily noticed two people standing across the street. She started screaming hoping they would hear her, but they didn't even flinch. Suddenly, the door of the van opened and the kidnapper rushed inside. He immediately started the car and drove away. They drove for a few more hours. It was already dark outside when they finally arrived at their final destination. The man opened the van door and grabbed Emily by the arm. He pulled her out of the car. Emily looked around, but all she saw was a dark, deserted forest. They entered a small wooden cabin. The man opened a trapdoor in the floor that led to an underground cellar. He threw Emily down the stairs and closed the hatch, leaving her alone. Emily felt devastated, but it wasn't over. Emily looked around as her vision adjusted to the darkness. She could make out a thin little mattress on the floor and a bucket in the corner of the room. She was small enough to stand up, so she crawled along the walls to feel if there were any windows, but there weren't. There was no window, so it was dark 24 7 It made him lose track of time. He only opened the hatch to throw food at her so she could eat or to give her a bowl of water. One day, the hatch opened, and to Emily's surprise, it stayed open. She got up slowly and headed for the stairs. Her clothes were dirty from the floor and she stank of sweat. She walked up the stairs and had a squint at the light. What's your name, little girl? Emily, she said silently. Time to wash up, he said with a smirk on his face. I ran you a bath. Emily was confused by this, but she followed him into the bathroom. The man told her to undress and take a quick bath. But to Emily's surprise, he left the room and locked it behind him. Emily immediately went into full escape mode and looked around. There was a small window, but it was too high for her to reach, and unfortunately, there were no sharp objects around. She didn't want to upset the man, so she undressed and bathed. She washed her hair and started to feel pretty normal again. Maybe this man wasn't so bad after all. I'm done, she said in a shaky voice. She heard a few clicks as the lock unlocked and watched the door slowly open. Ah, you found the pajamas I left for you. Do you like it? He asked her. Yes, thanks. The kidnapper's face lit up upon hearing those words. 
but he wasn't as nice as he looked. During Emily's early years in captivity, she thought the man was nicer than she realized. But as she got older, Emily saw through her plans. He made sure she was always clean and dressed in white doll-like dresses. She had to obey him and do what he asked. As he got older, the man became more and more aggressive. It had been almost 10 years since she had been abducted, and Emily was about to turn 16. She had grown up in captivity, and it seemed normal to her. She didn't know anything else about life outside this cabin. Until the day something changed. One day, her captor left her alone in the cabin. He did that sometimes, but this time, it was different. Usually, he hid the TV remote, so she had no way to entertain herself. But today, he had forgotten, and Emily thanked God for that. Emily watched him close the door behind him and immediately grabbed the remote. She tried every button she could find and after a while she finally got it. She pressed the top buttons on the remote and the TV turned on. She stared at the screen in amazement, not knowing what she was actually seeing. But moments later, this news channel would save his life. She saw two people sitting in front of the camera talking about a missing girl. Emily imagined what that poor girl had been through. But after taking a closer look, she saw something that changed her life forever. A man and a woman appeared on the screen. They talked about the missing girl and showed a picture of her from the day she disappeared. Suddenly, she saw a picture of what the girl would look like today, and she looked like him. Like magic, she suddenly remembered everything. It was not his house. She wasn't supposed to be here. She had parents who had always been looking for her. Suddenly, she remembered that she had been kidnapped by the man from the park. She needed to escape ASAP. Emily turned off the TV and hid the remote. His body was filled with adrenaline as all his old memories flooded his mind. She inspected all the windows to see if her captor might have left any open. But to her disappointment, everything was locked. She had to act fast, so Emily looked for a possibility to leave this horrible place. And just when she was about to give up, she heard an engine in the distance. She searched the kitchen, hoping to find some weapon. They always used plastic knives, so there were no sharp objects in the kitchen drawers. She looked around frantically and finally found something. It would certainly help him in his attempt to escape from this place. There, under the couch, she saw a metal pipe sticking out. She ran to him, grabbed him, and hid behind the door. The man walked through the door, and before he could do anything, Emily hit him over the head without hesitation with the metal pipe. Emily watched the man fall to the ground. She had no time to think. She immediately ran outside barefoot and ran away. She ran deep into the forest and as far as she could, but she didn't know which way to go. She walked through the woods for a few days and finally reached a gas station. All she knew was her life in the shack, so when she saw that gas station, she was a little hesitant. She had no idea what she would find inside the gas station, but she had to try to survive. As soon as she walked in, she felt all eyes on her. She grabbed a bag of crisps and started eating, but soon after, a woman approached her. She asked Emily if everything was okay, but the expression on her face revealed that she could tell something was wrong. Emily looked at the woman with sadness in her eyes. She didn't know if she could trust him, but she seemed so nice. Emily finally felt safe for the first time in her life, and as she opened her mouth to tell the woman everything, she burst into tears. The woman scooped Emily up in her arms and escorted her to the back of the store. There she sat her down and gave her water and a blanket. The woman then called the police and asked them to come immediately. It was urgent. Emily could hear sirens in the distance. She knew she would soon be reunited with her parents. The police asked for her name and they took her home as soon as she said so. She was so relieved to finally see her parents again. And now I'm here, mom, she said softly. Emily's mother cried with happiness and relief. She hugged her daughter as her husband let the police into the house. Both Emily's parents were in shock as they thought she was probably dead. The police had to bring Emily to the station for questioning, but they wanted her to find her parents first. Thus, Sarah and Rick went with their daughter to the police station so that she explained everything. Emily was really upset and asked the police if they were going to arrest the man who had done this to her. They promised him that they would do everything they could to arrest him and bring him to justice. Thus, after all the information provided by Emily, the police were able to find her kidnapper and arrest her. 
Emily spent the rest of her life with her loving parents. Then, as an adult, she became a private detective.